I'm Chanel from Kaift. Today, I'm going to talk about the MTGP, a highly scalable user of TCP stack for multi-core systems. As we all know, the internet traffic keeps increasing. If we look closely at the traffic, the short flows takes up the majority of flows these days. For example, over 90% of commercial traffic has smaller size than 32 kilobytes. That's not only happening in the cellular backhaul network, but also happening in data centers. While these short flows take up only a small fraction of the traffic volume, they impose high flow management overhead. For example, many network systems such as SSL proxy, network caches, and web servers face a challenge to handling many short flows. Let's think about it in terms of TCP performance problem. For larger flows, it is easy to fill up 10 G pipe even with one flow. But in the case of small flows, no matter how many cores you have, it is fairly challenging to fill up the 10 G pipe. The reason for the poor performance is largely to fill. To fill up the link with um, small flows, you need to process a large number of packets in a unit time. For example, you have to process uh, almost 15 million packets per second in case of 64 byte packets. Secondly, existing kernel is not designed for multi-core systems, which we'll talk about in the detail later. To know more about the problem, we measure the TCP connection zero performance in a tight loop. In this graph, x-axis shows the number of cores, and y-axis shows the number of established connections per second. You can see that performance does not scale with the CPU cores. And what's the worst is that the performance collapses when we use more CPU cores. Next experiment, this graph shows the CPU usage breakdown of web servers on Linux, which serves a small files of 64 byte files. We make the web server busy that use 100% of CPU usage and in here file IO is not a bottleneck. The kernel, TCP IP stack and packet IO uses uh, use 83% of CPU cycles. Here the application only allowed to use 17% of CPU cycles in this measurement. If you want to increase the performance of web servers which serve as small files, it is clear that you should remove the corner overhead. Performance bottlenecks mainly come from three factors, shared resources, uh, broken locality, and power core processing. Uh, we'll talk about this soon in next slide. As a result, with MTHP, we actually greatly reduce these bottlenecks we make the TCP IP processing more efficient, and the CPU usage for application increases 2.35 times. Uh, as a result, we improve the performance TCP by factor of three to 25 uh, per times, depending on the application. Uh, I'll explain more about the uh, bottleneck lying in the corner first, and then present our approach overcoming the problem. The first inefficiency comes from the shared resources in corner. Modernic hardware has a feature that uh, feature that the distributes multiple packets into multiple queues, and then we can distribute the interrupt and processing to multiple cores as well. However, even Nick support the distribution if you share single um, port with multiple thread, the listening queue is shared for multiple cores and access to Q should be serialized by a lock. Uh, so and another shared resource is that when uh, accepting a new connection, shared file discrete space in the process has the overhead. One uh, of the uh, requirements of Pogix API is that the newly created file descriptor should be the minimum available integer in the file descriptor space. To meet this requirement, uh, Linux TCP should do linear search for finding empty slot for every creation of file descriptor space for a new connection. The second inefficiency is that broken locality between the core processing packet IO interrupt 
and the core between uh, handling the connection. For example, packet I/O interrupt for a connection is going to the core one, a uh, core zero. If the core four accept the established uh, core three accept the established connection, then the core three will access the connection context to read or write by the stream. This broken locality makes the cache line sharing between two cores. The last inefficiency is that lack of support for batching in kernel for packet I/O as well as socket system call. When a packet comes from the network, the kernel puts the packet, including power packet memory allocation and the allocation. Also, the pre-consistent core for accessing the socket context, such as accept, read, or write, become the overhead. As known in previous research, the frequency system code imposes mode switching overhead as well as cache pollution. I'll briefly introduce related work here. I have already explain, explained the limitations of the Linux stacks. To overcome the li limitations, SLU support, which is recently introduced in Linux, and Affinity Accept uh, provide the partition queue to multiple cores that enable some amount of scalability. Megapipe is one of the high performance research system that partitions the listening socket and preserve locality. It replaced the interface between Linux stack and application, though the batching is available in form of completion IO model. However, now the performance is still limited by kernel itself. So uh, that uh, Megapipe still consume 80% of CPU cycles in kernel. So we are interested in how much performance improvement can we get if we implement a TCP step purely in user level, detaching the kernel's complexity. To address these inefficiencies, we design and implement MTCP, a high performance user level TCP for multi core systems. Many previous studies have attempted to find a solution by maintaining the current corner TCP IP stack. However, we choose a clean slate design, uh, designing the entire TCP stack from scratch to detach the corner's complexity. Uh, to address the overhead from shared resources and broken locality, uh, the new design should allow each core works totally independent of each other, and they have no shared resources, app, and every resource should be pinned to the core. To address the overhead from the uh, lack of support for batching, every processing from the packet I/O to the application should be batched together. We also design portable APIs that are compatible with existing applications using BSD socket API. Here is the overview of our architecture. From the bottom, we need high performance packet IO. So we adapt our usual level packet IO library uh, called uh, packet shader IO and modify the library to support event driven packet input and output. Over the packet IO library, you implement a MTCP stack, which is a user level. MTCP thread is running on each core independently. It exposes a socket API as well as ePOR API for applications. Here, an application thread is mapped to MTCP thread. So in our architecture, everything except the NIC driver is implemented at the user level. This architecture can solve the challenges uh, listed previously. First, the pairwise power core threading model uh, uh, provides cache locality and ensures parallelism. Second, we allow batching from MTCP thread to the pack, uh, MTCP thread and packet IO, as well as the MTCP and the application. Third, MTCP provides a BSD-like socket API that can easily port existing applications. Now, I will explain the important part of our design. First, our MTCP is implemented in thread model. The same number of MTCP thread and application thread exist in the system. Communication between the application and MTCP only happens inside the core, uh, inside a pair. 
Each pair is also pinned to the uh, core, uh, to a core, and works independently of each other. Uh, when a packet arrives at the NIC hardware, the NIC distributes the packet to the power core packet queues. At this moment, the packet included in the same connection go into the same core. Uh, each MTCP thread also manages the power core listening queue. An application acceptor established the connection only from its paired MTCP queue, MTCP thread. Also, MTCP thread manages their own power core file descriptor space, and they are independently managed from Linux's virtual file system. In this way, each pair works independently of each other, and MTCP system implements a cache-aware thread. Now, let's compare the Linux and MTCP for communication between application and TCP. The socket call in Linux is translated to the function call and context switching between application thread and MTCP thread. However, let's think about the overhead. Context switching actually requires higher overhead than system call. To solve the challenge, Batching the communication between MTCP thread and application thread is required. So let's see what happens inside the MTCP thread. From the bottom, all the way up to the application, it infers batching processing naturally. Here is the overall picture. When packets arrive at the leak, the MTCP thread read and process them once and register event to notify application. And when the application thread runs, it processes all the events at once and sends requests to MTCP. Again, uh, MTCP thread handles application requests at once and creates packets to send. The MTCP thread and application thread use shared queue to communicate each other. The requests and responses are firstly buffered at the shared queue and the scheduled thread accesses the queue to reach the event. Uh, <laughs> sorry, uh, the, yeah, uh, the orange box shows the uh, shared queue between MTCP and application thread. So while we implement the TCP stack from scratch, MTCP threads a similar API with BSD socket API. It also provides a popular event model repo. So it enables easy porting of existing application. To port the existing application to MTCP, you just need to attach a MTCP underbar prefix to the BSD socket API. Also, we provide EPO interface to support event driven model. We port existing application of web server like HDD and web server benchmark uh, to uh, Apache benchmark and a reverse SSL proxy SSL shader and web locally player. Regardless of the total number of code lines, we require mostly less than 100 lines of code change. Uh, actually, we have a number of opti other optimizations in the paper, and what I present is only partial of them, so please read our paper for more detail. So we implemented MTCP with 12,000 lines of C code, which include packet IO, TCP flow management, user level socket API, and event system library. We also modify and add what, 550 lines to patch the PSIO library to support the event-driven packet IO. Our TCP implementation follows RFC uh, 793 and use new Linux congestion control algorithm. Our stack has passed the heavy collecting test with Linux stack and also passed the stress test our own test. For evaluation, we check the multi-core scalability of MTCP and compare the performance with previous solutions. Also, to check the feasibility of our system, we port the application and evaluate how much performance is improved by uh, using MTCP. In this presentation, we choose two applications to show a web server to show the performance under the real workload 
and it is a proxy to show the performance improvement of applications bottlenecked at the TCP processing. First, we evaluate the multi-core scalability of MTCP compared with other systems. Uh, to evaluate the heavy connection overhead, uh, connection management overhead with small packet processing overhead, each connection pings and pong 64 byte packet and then close the connection. Uh, the performance of Linux first is limited by the shared listening queue between multiple cores and is not scalable with multi cores. Visual port recently added option in Linux enables some amount of uh, scalability by partitioning a listening queue to the multiple thread. But it still shares the file discrete space in a process and does not uh, assure the core locality. Megapipe actually significantly improved the space, uh, significantly improved the multi-core scalability, and, but however, the performance is still limited by the kernel itself from inefficient small packet processing. MTCP chooses the uh, clean slate design to achieve higher performance by removing all limitations in the kernel and it shows 25 times better performance than Linux and three times better than Megapipe, uh, the best system ever known. Here. So, and then we evaluate the ported application performance of MTCP compared to the other performance. First, we port the web server, Live HPC, and evaluate the static file workloads from Spec Web 2009 to show the real traffic workload. As a result, MTCP shows 3.2 times better than Linux and 1.5 times faster than their pipe. Secondly, we compare the performance of reverse SSL proxy SSL shader. SSL shader is a research system that increases the performance of SSL handshake using GPU. The performance was bottlenecked was CPU before SSL shader. However, after using GPU, now the performance is lies in the uh, TCP processing. So uh, we evaluate the SSL proxy with MTCP. We choose a Cypher suite with 10 24-bit RSA, 128 AES, and HMAC SHA-1. The client download one byte file object via HTTP to compare the performance of SSL handshake only. With respect to the number of concurrent clouds, it shows that 18% uh, to 33% improvement than Linux. The performance improvement is much higher with larger number of concurrent connections since MTCP effectively handles many concurrent connections. So we believe that MTCP can also help the other applications which are bottlenecked at TCP processing as well. Here is the conclusion. We design and implement MTCP, a high performance user level TCP stack for multi-core systems. We choose clean slate design to avoid corners um, inefficiency for handling many short flows. MTCP make full use of parallelism and batching processing to achieve high performance. We achieve parallelism between each core and per core resource management. Inside each core, we optimize the processing uh, by log pre data structures as well as uh, cache aware threading. MTCP eliminate the system core overhead and reduce context switching costs between MTCP thread and application thread by event batching. So, as a result, we improve the performance of TCP by a factor of 3 to 25 times. Now, the source code is available from this link, so please freely download it, use it, and any feedback and question is welcomed. Thank you. Quick question about the batching I.O. So do you use any timers actually to gather the job, like enough job actually you can do the batch? Uh, sorry? Do you use any timers to do the batching I.O.? 
Uh, actually, we do not use timers and we use Linux threads. So the batching uh, context switching is uh, naturally available and batching is as well as naturally uh, happens with the context switching. So we do not use time any timers. Um, okay, maybe I should take off my. So I'll ask. Hi, uh, cool work. So I, w I was wondering, so we've heard from other work like NetMap that yeah. um, uh, allocating SKBs and stuff is really expensive. And you, you're telling us in this work that it's basically the scheduling that's, that's killing performance and maybe the, the system call uh, overhead. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just wondering, do you get a feel about, you know, what are the comparative overhead? Because like, you measure the whole kernel and you tell us it, it takes a, long, a lot of time, right? But what, what does that come from? Uh, so your question is that the, the system call overhead and the context switching overhead. How do they compare to, let's say, the SKB allocation overhead? Right. And I'm trying to understand yeah, exactly yeah, yeah. where the performance gains are, uh, performance gains are coming from. Right. Yeah. Actually, we did, we do not know that what the where is the performance gains come from. So which part contribute to the most performance benefit, or which part is not? We don't know. But the we have the result that the system call. System cool is normally uh, higher than 90% overhead of context switching overhead, but we our batching enables uh, our bat one scheduling time. We can, our batching can handle about 20, uh, 2,000 of event in a batch. So in this way, we don't know exactly which uh, uh, performance benefit is from, but we know that the a batching of between context switching, which gives the higher benefit. Uh, is it enough for question? Maybe I yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, And another question was yeah. like, if you if you took those scheduling ideas and implemented them in the kernel, you know, what would be the benefit? Uh, the actually benefit is that the kernel is kernel is hard to provide the uh, event driven APIs for uh, application. But it means that the corner provides a corner and application communicate in a way of system core interrupt. So, application API should be changed to support the event-driven model inside the corner. But in our approach, application does not need to change their event model. It can support um, it, the application that core the. Uh, connect or listen or anything. And the batching is available inside the corner, uh, inside the MTGP. But in corner, it is impossible, I think. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, in, your, in your picture, you have uh, that uh, the application is divided into two. So your applications are aligned to cores. Do you have to rewrite your application so that uh, uh, you have a process running per core? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, actually, um, our reported application is normally uh, support one process multi-thread models. In that case, the, we can naturally just changing the API it will be on enough. But in case of uh, single process, single pro uh, single uh, single process, single thread model, in that case, we have to make that one process multi process multi-thread models. We need that kind of changes. Uh, let's thank the speaker once more.